DuPont Company brings you The Pinkerton Man, starring Lee Bowman on the Cavalcade of America. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Most accidents happen right in the home. Watch out for boiling water in the kitchen. Watch that electric light switch when you're taking a bath. Watch that dark flight of stairs. And watch out for rugs and carpets that may trip you or skid out from under you. DuPont Rug Anchor is a sponge rubber underlay designed to make rugs stay put. It makes them cling like a leech, no matter how slippery floors may be. And it adds to their life, because it keeps dirt from working up from the floor into the back of the rug. Rug Anchor is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. The Cavalcade of America. America. America means skyscrapers and haylofts, the crack of a pioneer's flintlock and the sound of the riveter's machine, the outline of a church steeple against the midnight sky. America is your story. America is you and everyone you know. Tonight, we present Lee Bowman in The Pinkerton Man on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. It is the year 1859. In one of the coaches of a train bound for Columbia, Tennessee, a man sits looking calmly at the countryside. He's dressed quietly, and you wouldn't look twice at him because, well, because he looks like a hundred, a thousand other men you've seen. His name, Alan Pinkerton, America's greatest detective. As he sits, another man, carrying what appears to be a sample case, comes into the coach, looks around for a moment, and then... Uh, excuse me, is this seat taken? What? Oh, no, no, no. Help yourself. Oh, thanks. I hope you don't mind. No seats on the shady side of the coach. Oh, it's all right. I don't like to sit in the sun myself. Oh, thanks. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I always have trouble with my sample case. <laughs> I see. Uh, what is it this time, Colin? Ties, socks, handkerchiefs. Mm-hmm. Now, what's it all about, Chief? Where'd you get on? Last stop. Took a local and caught this train from there. Good. Collins, I'm going through with the case. Yeah, that's what I figured, Chief. All right, what's my job? I don't know yet, but I'll have some use for you. Yeah, but Mr. Pinkett and you... Quillen. J.B. Quillen. What? Huh? Well, that's my name, get it? Oh, oh yeah, all right. A businessman, retired. Health reasons. Good enough, Mr. Quillen. You stay at the hotel in Columbia. Mm-hmm, and you? Uh, a boarding house, I think. For how long? Well, I don't know. Depends on how tough this will be. Mm, plenty tough, Chief. Case is a year old. Trail's as cold as a dog's nose. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll dig around until I find a lead. Well, what kind of a lead in a case that's grown a beard? Oh, that's my job, Collins. Now, when we get to Columbia, you get off first. Go directly to the hotel. Sit tight and I'll contact you. And... That's the story, Collins. Uh, don't sound good to me, Chief. Not a lead. Not a single lead. Well, a bank robbery and murder that happened over a year ago? What can you expect? Well, I don't know. Something, anything. There must be something. Uh, suspects? Four. The president of the bank gave me the names. And? Well, Collins, I've eliminated three of those people. Why? Well, there's nothing to tie them in in the first place. All the local police had to go on was suspicion. Well, that's not much. But uh, how about the fourth suspect? A man named Samuel Arthur. Anything on him? No, nothing. Uh, nothing at all. But look, if Arthur's guilty, if you think he's the one, you got to have something. Uh, what about the money from the robbery? Not a penny of it's shown up. That's why I believe the job was pulled by someone in this town. Someone who was afraid to leave. Someone who killed the watchman Walters and then got panicky. Panicky? A murderer who's played doggo for a year isn't exactly panicky. He's smart. Waiting for the time he can leave. Collins, I'm changing boarding houses. <laughs> Cooking bad at the one you're in now? No, the hunting's bad. Samuel Arthur stays at Mrs. Holly's boarding house. Here, here's the address. All right, what's next? I'm going to find one lead, one clue that'll give me a toehold. I'll see you later. Your last move gives me 
a triple jump and king me. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Evans, you win again. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm still the checker champion of Miss Holly's <laughs> boarding house. <laughs> no question about that. I resign. Care for another one, Mr. Quillen? It's only 8 o'clock. No, no, no. Thank you, sir. Tomorrow night, perhaps. Fine, fine. Well, I think I'll turn in, then. Oh, there you are. Have you finished your game, gentlemen? Yep, yep. And I'm turning in. You keep Mr. Quillen company, Edna. Make him feel right at home here. Well, uh, how long are you planning to stay, Mr. Quillen? Oh, that, uh, that all depends. On what, Mr. Quillen? Well, uh, on, uh, on my health. Oh. What is your ailment? Uh, my ailment? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, uh, it started a little over a year ago, and I, uh... Yes? Uh, wasn't that Mr. Arthur who went past the door then? Well, I didn't see, but I guess it was. Oh. Oh, uh, well, uh, excuse me, I, I'm rather tired myself. I think I'll turn in, too. Oh, well, uh, maybe we could have a little talk tomorrow night. Oh, that will be delightful, Miss Oglethorpe. Good night. Good night, Mr. Quillen, and, and sleep tight. Huh? Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Hello. Huh? Uh, oh, hello. Oh, sorry, I startled you, Mr. Arthur. Oh, not at all, Mr. Quillen. Beautiful evening outside. Yes, yes, it is. Um, I, uh, I was just uh, thinking of going for a walk. Care to come along? Well, I'm a little tired and I... Uh... Uh, perhaps uh, just around the block. No, no, I don't think so. Maybe uh, tomorrow evening. All right, glad to, glad to. Uh, yes? Oh, nothing. Good night, Mr. Quillen. Good night, Mr. Arthur. Oh, uh, Mr. Quillen. Yes? Are you planning on going into business down here? A business? No, no, I'm retired. Oh, well, then you'll be with us for quite a while. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I, I don't like to stay in one place very long, Mr. Arthur. like a change of scenery once in a while. I see. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Uh, good night, Mr. Arthur. Why, Mr. Quillen, I, I thought you'd gone upstairs. Yes, well, uh, I met Mr. Arthur. Stopped for a little chat with him. He's very nice, isn't he? Oh, yes, very nice. We're all so fond of him. Uh, has, uh, has he been living here long? Well, I, I think about five months. Oh. Uh, what does uh, Mr. Evans do for a living? Nothing. Nothing at all. I think he came into a little money some time ago. Oh, but, but there, I, I mustn't gossip, must I? <laughs> well, no harm in that. No. Well, uh, Mr. Arthur doesn't work either. Oh, retired. Well, it's hard to say, Mr. Quillen. I suppose he had some money saved up in... Oh, well, there I go again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Well, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Of course. Uh, we must have a longer talk sometime. Uh, yes, sir? What can I do for you? Uh, do you have cigars? Uh, yes, sir. Any special kind you want? Well, uh, mm hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, two of these, please. Uh, yes, sir. Well, nice store you've got here. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I must keep you pretty busy running it. Well, kind of. Could use some help. Yeah, I'll bet you could. Uh, don't, uh, don't you have a clerk? Well, not now. I had one, but I had to let him go. He got to talking sassy to the trade, losing his temper. Oh, well... No wonder you let him go. Yep, I couldn't afford to have him given trouble like that. Funny thing, too. All of a sudden, he up and began acting like he was crazy. Well, now, that's funny. I wonder what makes people do that. You know, I had a cousin like that, nice as could be. Then one day, just like that, began acting funny. Same as Sam Arthur. Too bad. I like Sam. Everybody did. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Well, I'll see you again. Uh, drop in any time. Glad to hear you. Thanks. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hello there. Yeah. Oh, how are you? Fine. Uh, you got a match? Well, sure thing. Here you are. Be at your hotel in ten minutes. All right. I've learned a couple of things that might interest you. Fired from his job because he got touchy and irritable. I see. 
Well, I learned he's been keeping to himself. Won't have a thing to do with anybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody seemed to like him before, though. Holland, suppose Sam Arthur has something on his mind, on his conscience. Well, suppose he has. What can we do about it? Find out what it is. Well, how? If he's guilty, which we don't know, he's kept it to himself for a year now. Yeah, but that sudden break from his old life. Collins, I'm convinced his conscience is working on him. Well, if it didn't make him break in a year, it won't break him now. Yeah, I know that. We've got to work on him. Yeah, but you can't do that without getting him suspicious. Start asking a guy like that some questions, and he'd shut up like a clam. You know that, Chief. We've had him before. Yeah, conscience is a funny thing, Colin. Uh, so is the instinct for self-preservation. Just let Sam Arthur get the slightest hint you're after him, and you won't be able to touch him with a ten-foot pole. Look, I've got a job for you. You'll have to go about it quietly, too. All right, what is it? Find out all you can about... Uh, but I did. There's nothing about Sam Arthur you don't know already. I'm not talking about him. I want you to find out all you can about Ben Walters. Walters? But he's the murdered bank watchman. I know it. Uh, I've known that for a long time, Colin. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, but what good's it going to do? You ever hear of psychology? Psychology? Never heard of it. You will. We'll use that and a little American ingenuity. Great combination, Collins. Now go to it. You are sure of all these facts? Positive, Chief. Well, uh, what's, what's this about the perfume? Well, not exactly perfume. It uh, was after shaving scent he used. Crazy about the stuff. Used it all the time. Hmm. And he, uh, he talked like this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Quillen, uh, this is the way I used to talk. Yeah, that's the way. You should have been an actor, Colin. I could have been a good one. You're going to be. Huh? I've got an idea. Now, maybe it'll work. It's never been tried before. I don't get you, Chief. You will. Collins, get a bottle of the scent you were talking about. Can you do it? Sure, but what's the idea? Psychology. Now, here's what I want you to do. I'll see that Arthur doesn't go near his room until after you finish the job I want you to do. Oh, Mr. Arthur. Huh? Oh, uh, hello, Quillen. You, uh, uh, want some company on your walk? Well, I wasn't going very far. Just out for a breath of the air. <laughs> well, so was I. Uh, <laughs> confidentially, Miss Oglethorpe was waiting for me. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, she likes to talk. Uh, that she does. <laughs> uh, she doesn't care what she talks about either. No, just as long as she talks. <laughs> uh, you uh, sleep well last night? Uh, sleep? Well, of course. Why did you ask that? Oh, it was so hot. I was restless all night. I heard you, and uh, I thought you were restless, too. I almost dropped over to see you. No, so I... I wasn't restless. No? Well, uh, I guess I heard something else. Heard something? What? Oh, nothing, nothing. My imagination, I guess. But uh, since you're just next door to me, I thought it was you. Well, what are you talking about? Well, nothing, nothing at all. You see, I, I, I don't sleep very well. Probably one of those half-awake, half-asleep dreams. Oh, what, um, what was it you heard? Oh, some sort of mumbling, like a person talking in his sleep. It wasn't I. No, no, probably not. No, I, I've never talked in my sleep. Well, I, I didn't say you did. I was just mentioning it. Uh, forget it. It was more than likely it was me. Well, I've, uh, I've got to leave you here. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, I, I've got to get something at the store. Well, uh, I'll walk uh, with you. Oh, please, I'm uh, going to stop and see a friend. Oh, well, then I won't trail along then. Good night. Good night, Quillen. I'll see you tomorrow. It was pretty smart of you, Chief. You trailed us, huh, Collins? Sure. Now what? How'd you do back in his room? Oh, fine. No trouble getting in at all. The lock and the connecting door between his room and yours was a cinch. All right. Let's get back before he does. I'll go first. I'll let you in when the coast is clear. We're listening to Lee Bowman in The Pinkerton Man on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the
the second part of our story opens, Alan Pinkerton is trying to break a year-old murder and robbery case in Columbia, Tennessee. Certain that a man named Sam Arthur is guilty, Pinkerton is working on him. And Pinkerton's plan seems to be succeeding, for he and Collins listen to an argument going on outside his room. Really, Mr. Arthur, it's absolutely ridiculous. I know what I'm talking about, Mrs. Holly. And don't shout at me, I'm not deaf. And I don't like your insinuations that someone in this house was in your room. But someone was. I tell you, someone was in my room. Dora was in to clean. Dora doesn't have to go into my dresser. Now you listen to me. Dora's been with me for 15 years. She's a good girl. I, I tell you, somebody was in my room. I told you it was only Dora. If you don't like things the way they are around here, Mr. Arthur, you can leave now, tonight, this minute. I... Oh, never mind. Forget what I said. Good night. <laughs> I believe it's starting to work, Collins. Well, maybe you're right, Chief. Yes, I think so, but it's not enough yet. Hey, where are you going? Stay here. I'm going to see him. Now. Huh? Who's there? Quillen. Can I come in? What for? Uh, oh, just, uh, just to talk. Well, just a minute. What do you want? Well, I... <laughs> I just heard you and Mrs. Holly thought I could do something. Anything wrong? Oh, it's Dora. I know she was in my dresser. Oh, really? How can you be sure? Well, come here. Come here. Here, this drawer. Anything disturbed? No, no, but I know someone was in this drawer. Uh, I don't know how you can be so sure if nothing's out of place. Well, don't you... Don't you smell anything? Smell anything? What? Well, yes, a peculiar odor, like uh, perfume. No. Nothing. What? Get closer. Now. Well, I'm sorry, Arthur, but I'm afraid you've got too good an imagination. It's not my imagination. I tell you, there's some kind of perfume been spilled in my, in my drawer there. Oh, it must be your nerves, Arthur. I tell you, I can't smell a thing. Uh, you're, you're sure of that? Look, uh, why don't we get someone else? Evans, Miss Ogilvy. Oh, no, no, please. N ne never, never mind. Well, but if you say it's here, I, I could be wrong, you know. Now, Evans or Miss I Ogilvy... said no. I don't want them in here. Well, all right. Yes, it, it's all right. It, I guess it was my imagination. Sure. It's funny, but, uh, you know, nerves and imagination can play tricks on a man, especially when he's worried. Good night. Why didn't you answer the first time? Well, it, uh, it's after two in the morning. I, I didn't want to speak loudly. Uh, too hot to sleep, eh? For me, too. Yes, I... I came down to the veranda to get some air. Uh, it's not too cool here, either. Sultry. It's one of those nights you read about. You know, the, the kind that makes you feel something's going to happen. The still, quiet air... The heavy humidity. Even the crickets are quiet. I... Uh, you were going to say something? No. Um, nothing. Just look at that sky. Not a star showing. No breeze. Nothing. Just deadly quiet. I can see for myself. Oh, sorry. <gasps> Excuse me. You're... Your handkerchief. A what? Handkerchief? What about it? That's where it comes from. You use it. You use it. Use what? What are you talking about? That scent. That's where it came from. It wasn't in my room. It was yours. Scent? On my handkerchief? Oh, no, absolutely not. Never use scent. I can't stand this. It's stuff. coming from your handkerchief now. I smelled it when you pulled it out. It wasn't here before. Oh, now, look here, Arthur. I never use scent. I don't smell anything. No. No, I don't believe in things, things like that. You don't believe in things like what? Man, your nerves are bad. It's not my nerves. I tell you, it's not my nerves. You ready, Collins? Yeah. And listen to him pacing back and forth. Get in the closet. You know what to say. Right. Arthur. Sam, Arthur. 
Can you hear me, Sam? Huh? Sam, this is Walter. Talk to me, Sam. Tell me why you did it, Sam. Who? Who's that? Sam, why didn't you talk to me? What? Tell me why you killed me, Sam. Please talk to me. Arthur, what the devil's the idea of bursting into my room? Who are you talking to? Talking? Me? You're crazy. There's somebody in here with you. There's somebody in that closet. Oh, you are crazy. Why should anyone be in there? You were talking to someone. All right, all right. So I was talking to someone. Someone in that closet. Go ahead and look in. See who it was. Well, go on. Satisfy yourself. Or do you want me to open it for you? No. No, please. Please don't open it. No! Come on out, Collins. He's ready to make a break for it. Yeah, he almost looked in. No, no, he didn't dare. He was afraid he wouldn't see anyone. Well, I... Hey, he's running away. Yes, I thought he would. All right. The next train doesn't leave Columbia for an hour. And in that hour, we've got to hire two men and plant them on that train with Arthur. Come on. Uh, excuse me, is this seat... Ta- what? Why, Arthur, what are you doing on this train? Quiller. Well, this is fine. I thought I'd have to ride this train alone. I got a wire suddenly. Business up north. Oh? But you, where are you going? Well, I, I, I have a sister in New Jersey I haven't seen in a long time, and I... Oh, uh, oh, you made up your mind suddenly, didn't you? Yes, yes, I was worried about her. Oh, well, that accounts for your nerves, eh? Worry will do that to a man. Oh, yes, yes, I was worried about her. I see, well, this is going to be pleasant. Phew. Still hot, isn't it? I thought, well... Well, what's the matter? Your... Your, your handkerchief. My handkerchief? What's the matter with it? That perfume I smelled. You do use it. What are you talking about? There's no scent on this. There is. There is. I can smell it. Oh, now look, Arthur. I never use scent. It's your imagination again. I tell you it's not. You use the same kind of scent that he used. Uh... He? Who? Please. Please, Quillen... Don't fool me. What are you trying to do? I know it's your handkerchief. Look, Arthur, we can settle this easily enough. I'll ask the man in back of us. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I know this sounds a little Wait a minute. Silly, what are you but... going to do? I'll just show you what your imagination can do. Uh, to, uh, to settle a bet, will you smell this handkerchief and see if there's scent on it? Huh? Oh, sure. <laughs> Nothing on that handkerchief. What? There, you see, Arthur? Give me that. Sure, sure. Uh, ask that man across from us. Mister, I, I beg your pardon, please. Yes. There's uh, scent on this handkerchief. Will you, will you please tell me what kind? <laughs> you crazy? No, no, please, please, just smell it. What? All right. Nope, I can't smell anything. What? Satisfied, Arthur? Well, well, I can't stand it anymore. I've got to tell. I've got to tell someone. I've been living with it for a year, and I. I can't hold it in anymore. I can't. I can't. What is it, Arthur? <laughs> I killed a man, Ben Walters. But I didn't mean to. He woke up and I had to hit him. I swear. I swear I didn't mean uh-huh. to. Didn't mean to, huh? <laughs> oh, it's been driving me crazy for a year. And this last week has been the worst. It's, it's like he's come back. He's come back, Quillen. Oh, I had to tell somebody I'll go crazy. <laughs> it's better this way. Come on. <laughs> what will they do to me? What will they do? I don't know, Arthur. But it's much better this way. We'll get off at the next stop. Our star, Lee Bowman, will return in just a moment. But first, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. Sound travels about 12 and a half miles a minute. And the new jet-propelled planes are already flying 10. This means a jet plane flies right along behind the sound it makes. It's like something out of a rocket trip to Jupiter in a comic book. But it's a long way from being comic. When a plane travels near the speed of sound, air, unable to get out of the way, is compressed and piles up around the leading edges of the wing. Behind this shock wave, the air is rough. So rough that a plane may be torn to pieces. Aviation engineers are sweating out this problem right now. 
Among other experiments, for instance, the aircraft laboratory at Wright Field has designed an entirely new type of wing made of glass and plastic. Outside, to reduce skin friction to a minimum, it is finished and polished to a mirror-like surface, freed from rivets, overlapping joints, and other projections. Inside, the construction is even more novel. Instead of being full of ribs and braces, the new wing has only half a dozen structural parts. The wing's surfaces are made from several layers of glass cloth cemented together. Supporting these surfaces and sandwiched between them and the internal structural parts is a foamed cellulose acetate plastic, lighter than cork. This construction provides great strength and unusual rigidity in the wing surfaces. With all the resources of American business ingenuity at the service of aviation engineers, we have assurance that the combined efforts of scientific and business enterprise will keep American transportation in the forefront. The cellular plastic used in this new wing is a development of applied chemical research by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Now here's our star, Lee Bowman. Thanks, Gain. You know, I've always been a great detective story fan, and that's why it was interesting for me to learn that America's Alan Pinkerton used psychological methods to solve a crime so long ago. Pinkerton believed that ingenuity was the birthright of every American. In time, he was to see worldwide distinction come to American detectives for their work in ensuring law and order for our citizens. The United States Secret Service, an organization Pinkerton founded, as well as his own Pinkerton men, rank high in international prestige, along with France's famed Sûreté and Britain's Scotland Yard. It was a pleasure gain to portray this remarkable detective on Cavalcade tonight. Thank you and good night. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade brings you Gene Hersholt in Parade. It's the tender and moving story of Peter Berrick, an immigrant who believed in dreams and who believed in working hard to make those dreams come true. Be sure and listen next Monday to Gene Hersholt in Parade on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company. Our star tonight, Lee Bowman, appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, producers of The Jolson Story. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Russell Hughes. The part of Collins was played by William Johnstone, and the part of Arthur was played by Walter Mayer, who appeared through arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of The Yearling. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Gene Hersholt in Parade. On the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>